Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. So let's let's take a quick uh, uh, quick reminiscence, right? Quick little tour of uh, history's past. So if you guys remember, uh, it took us a lot of time to reclaim the 20-day moving average. And we finally reclaimed it on uh, May the 25th, right? And what happened next for the next two weeks we started going sideways. And the, the whole theory is the longer a stock or an ETF in this case, or just the general market consolidates uh, on a range, the higher probability it's gonna go in that direction. And we waited, right? If you guys remember, we waited and waited and waited. Good news was brushed off, bad news is brushed off. So all news was literally brushed off and just were waiting. We waited, we waited, and then all of a sudden, the market finally broke, right? And we finally gave up the 20 day moving average and what happened was for the next, you know, for the next two weeks or so, really aggressive sell, right? You guys remember that? As soon as we gave up that 20, really, really aggressive selling. And I'll, and I'll tell you, I was definitely one of the ones who were sitting there on this consolidation. And I'm like, oh, you know, we're gonna get, we're gonna get, as long as we go, we're gonna go higher, we're gonna go higher, we're gonna go higher. And until we actually go higher, it's just an opinion. I, and I've said this for, for many, many times, I'm wrong every day, whether it's, uh, whether it's on a trade, whether it's my thought process, directional bias, whatever the case may be, I'm going to be wrong, right? Right? Every, we're going to be wrong a lot. The most important part is put yourself in a situation that you're not painting in the corner, that you stay wrong. And once the price action shifts and you know the big body of work what is being represented in the market, then you can shift gears very, very quickly and make those necessary changes to kind of get yourself on the right side. So our last rally, right, and the Bulls did a really good job and we started rallying, we reclaimed the 20 day moving average just the same way we reclaimed the 20 day moving average here. And yesterday we rested and you know, and uh, today we started to rest. And you know, again, I'm definitely one of the people uh, going into today's session saying, well, this is great. Why even the hell, I just recorded a video last night about it. Hey, hey, the market can't go straight up. We just put seven and a half percent, seven and a half percent gain on the queues last week. How can we possibly go higher without resting? It was literally last night's video. And I said to myself, okay, that's fine. Let's see what happens here. Let's wait for these channels to get to expand. But this is the difference, right? This is the difference between being wrong and being, you know, being materialistically wrong. You know, we were sitting there, we had some longs, we'll talk about the pivots in a second. We had some longs we were watching, we had a couple of shorts we were watching, but the most important part was we were watching, right? You don't, you know, you don't start, uh, you don't start pushing a, a confirmation that's not there. You don't start uh, guessing when something's gonna happen, you wait for confirmation, that's the most important part. And that's one of the things I've been kind of illustrating and you know trying to beat down into people's brains over the last X amount of years that until it physically happens, until the price action physically happens, we're just waiting, right? We're just absolutely waiting. And I'll tell you, if you polled 100 people last night and you said, look, you know, we've, we're now day two under a day two over the 20 day moving average after a seven and a half percent run, where do you think we're gonna go, right? And the whole point is I think 99 out of 100 people are gonna turn around and say, oh, well, yeah, it looks great, right? We're resting after a seven and a half percent move, we're probably gonna go higher. And again, this is why this is the greatest reality show that's not on television. And when you take a step back, right? You take a step back and you realize what we've been talking about for a long, long time. All this is happening, all this is happening. All this is happening, right? Every single rally. What's the common denominator, right? Let me give you, let me give you, anybody who's been watching this video should comment below. What's the common, you know, what's the common denominator, right? Everything is happening below the 50 day moving average. And that's the bottom line. And it really, really does remind you very, very quickly two things are happening. Either number one, the market is just not gonna tap you on the shoulder and say, oh, that's it, rally's over, we're back to selling. And the second thing the market is going to remind you is this could come in any single time. And that's exactly what we saw today. So last week, what we saw very, very quickly with a seven and a half percent run today was taking out by 3% in the NASDAQ just by itself. 
But the most important part of what is happening or what potentially could happen is what you're looking for individual stocks. It shouldn't have been that easy to give up that 20 day moving average, right? There should have been much more of a fight. And we saw this morning, even when they back tested back to that 290 level. And if you, again, if you watched last night's video, I said, as long as we're staying up above the 290 level, right? There wasn't, you're not supposed to, it's not supposed, the market's not supposed to trick you. It's telling you where the fight is, right? It's telling you where the battleground state. And I said this last night's video, as long as we stay above 290, you got to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. And there's a flip side to that. Well, what happens if we start losing that 290? Yada, 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 minus 3% on the day. And we, if you go through charts tonight, it's just not, well, the index has got hurt, the stocks are still fine. Look at Amazon, right? Look what happened to Amazon. Amazon had this really, really big run. And today, not only did it lose the 20-day moving average, lost the five-day moving average, which is a short-term sentiment, and lost the 10-day moving average that's called the birth of the trade. And now we started seeing some pretty deep out-of-the-money calls come in for September and October. We saw some uh, 90s, we saw some 85 puts coming in. It's pretty, you know, it's a pretty big, you know, it's a pretty big deal considering this is the first day down. And this has happened way before uh, these moving averages were being tested. If you look at the bottom of the channel here, Amazon, again, this, this 100 area is not for tomorrow, but eventually once this $100 area gets tested and held several times, then yeah, you're gonna start to seeing a big decline. Tesla, again, that we were, you know, we were watching for upside bias. How can you not, right? Again, how can you not until it starts losing the 20-day moving average? Snap of a finger, lost the 20-day moving average, lost the five-day moving average, and closed right on the 10-day moving average, right? So we went from really, really aggressive upside bias potential to, uh-oh, here we go again. And you start looking, you know, stock after stock after stock, NVIDIA, starting to break down. Here's your bottom channel here. You got AMD, right? You got AMD as well. Look look how close this thing is to starting its next leg down. And, and again, if you really, really think about it, the semiconductors never rally, right? They really, there, were, there was the one sore spot in the NASDAQ 100 last week, despite putting up a 7.5% gain. So it's, you know, we're kind of back to where we started before last week. And the most important part right now is, again, if you're an investor, Again, it's very, very tough to, to, to be long this market. Once we get above the 50-day moving average in all aspects, that's a whole different story. But this is a trader's market right now. It's been a trader's market right now. You try to have the least amount of exposure overnight, whether you're long or short bias. But the most important part, there's so much violence. And that's the best way of saying it. There's so much general violence in that direction, one way or another, that you're going to have a lot of opportunity and you don't need to subject yourself to overnight exposure because these stocks have tremendous amount of range. So going into tomorrow, again, in a perfect world, what I would like to see, okay, hell, I would like to see a gap up. Not because the, I wanna see the stock strong, because again, what happens in a bear market, in a bear scenario after an engulfing candle? If there's usually a gap up the next day, stocks are gonna gap right into their 60 minute supply. And what happens to supply? They're probably going to get rejected. So there is a perfect world tomorrow. Yes, we're definitely, we, we want, you know, we want a gap up tomorrow because if these things do get rejected off their supplies and start taking down bottom channels, of course they're gonna get hit. That's the whole cycle of a bear market. So that's, you know, that's kind of the deal. That's kind of my frame of mind going into tomorrow. And if, if you look at uh, the indexes, you, you're kind of gonna represent the same thing. Here's the spies, right? If the spies start losing the five day moving average, again, the theory stocks trade from supply to supply and then from demand to demand. So if you get any close tomorrow below 377 on the spies, that's a problem. That's a big, big problem because look how much airspace you have back to the bottom. If you look at the queues, right? You have the queues, the same thing. You have the queues, they lost the five day moving average. If the queues lose tomorrow, 282 on the close. Guys, look how much room you have back to the downside. So we're definitely set up. I think that's the best way of saying it. We're, we're absolutely set up. And if you look at the pivots today, right? If you look at the pivots today, we had some longs, we had some shorts, but the common denominator of today was when the stock stalled out on the long side, you knew it was kind of a wrap. You didn't know it then, you didn't know it then, but you slowly started to see it. And the first clue was the snow, right? Snow got an upgrade today. Uh, it gapped up five bucks, but as soon as this thing started putting in opening range lows and started putting in and started going red on the day, you say to yourself, well, wait a minute, if a stock that just got upgraded 
can't rally that was sitting at the top of the range ready to resume uh oh what's going to happen for the rest of the day and you start seeing and then slowly but surely one by one we went from long pivots to short pivots and yada 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 here we are today so nio 2280 if it builds below can flush uh, NIO, uh, again, we talked about the EV names yesterday. Uh, pre market, you had LI come out with um, LI come out with um, some sort of offering. I think it was at the, at the money offering. NIO all day, you had short term $20 puts being traded, $17 puts being traded. Uh, watch this thing tomorrow. This thing starts building below uh, 22 bucks. You could start, you, you might start getting a, a pretty good back test, but 22.80 if it builds below, went down to 80. Uh, went down to 22. Tesla was so sloppy this morning. Uh, Tesla 742 rejected three times. If it builds below, can, can excuse me. If it builds, can stretch. So Tesla goes from 742 to 750, but it was so darn thin, man. Impossible to get any size. Very very tough trade. Literally made a cup of coffee on this thing. Uh, Baidu 156 needs to build. Uh, Baidu gets above the 56, stalls out. That's the theme, right? That was exactly the theme of the day and turns over. Snow never gave a second entry. Boeing, congratulations for you guys who took Boeing. I didn't trade any Boeing today. 142 needs to build. Boeing had a nice pop here at the open. Here, here is the 142, right? It took out the 142. Look at the move here, right to 147, which is the upper Bollinger Band. Very, very impressive move. Great job, guys. Great job on that one. Um, I just didn't trade that one. Coin, if you guys remember yesterday, the original pivot was 59. If it builds below, can flush, right? Traded down to 55. Uh, 55 today was confirmation. Uh, 55 needs to confirm for more downside. Here was coin, right? Things started changing very, very quickly. So here was the 59, excuse me, here was the 59, here was the 55, and coin traded all the way down to 50. I, I honestly think if this thing starts losing 50, you're gonna start seeing all these cryptos start coming in as well. Uh, there's a shot, it goes back down to the bottom range here. So there's more downside on coin as well. Uh, Amazon, again, you can see here, I started putting up uh, upward bias pivots. They never, either they stole out there or never got up there. Obviously, Amazon never got up there. Uh, Boeing, uh, big move on Boeing. NVIDIA got absolutely slammed. I still like it lower for tomorrow. 166.20, if it builds below, can flush. Now, keep this in mind. When I was putting in, and, I, and we were talking about this in uh, the webinar today, when I was putting in these downside pivots, by no stretch of the imagination that I think we were going to lose the 20-day moving average today. By, by no shot. Anybody who says, well, we saw this uh, sell-off, there's no shot, right? We were consolidating above the 20-day moving average. We weren't consolidating to go lower. We were consolidating to go higher. It just worked out that way that we went lower. So, you know, we were doing initially some of these moves for cash flow, right? 50 cents, a dollar, two dollars, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden the earth opened up and that earth opened up with, with Tesla. We'll talk about that in a second. But here is the 66.20 on NVIDIA. NVIDIA traded all the way down to 59. This thing starts losing 59, guys. This is a shot it gets down uh, to 47. The big one definitely was Tesla. It started off on cash flow, but then it got really, really aggressive. And why it got aggressive was because it lost the five-day moving average. That is the short-term sentiment. The first move, it got to 722, it bounced off the five-day, and then it lost 722. And if you go through my regular Twitter feed, you say uh, there's a shot it gets to 708, which it got there. And then we talk about there's a puncher shot it got to 795, it closed at 797. Now we are watching the downside of this pocket, man. If this thing starts losing the downside here, I mean, everybody has eyes, right? You can see where the next measure of potential is. So again, we're looking for, hoping for uh, a little bit of a gap up tomorrow in the market. We would love to see these stocks get rejected into supply. And if they start tur turning over and start confirming today's channels, we could get some pretty decent premium. So guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Stay safe. Again, you don't need to be the smartest guy in the room. Just don't be the dumbest. Guys, God bless. I'll see you all tomorrow.